Well, greetings, everyone, and welcome to this FIR, FIR interview, video interview, in fact, that we're conducting us, using Google Plus Hangout. And on your screen, you'll see me in the middle, Neville Hobson here in, in uh, Woking, Berkshire, in the UK. And on on uh, my right <laughs> is Shell Holtz in Concord, California. Morning to you, Shell. Morning, Neville. And or our I guest say, today, uh, afternoon, Neville. It's yep, it is afternoon where I am today. And our guest to my left uh, on the screen, as I'm looking at it, is our friend Lionel Menchaca, the chief blogger at Dell in Round Rock in Texas, Dell's headquarters. Good morning to you, Lionel. Hey, good morning. <clears throat> so we are here. Uh, this is a new medium for all of us, actually, to do an interview, Google Plus Hangouts, although I know you have some opinions about this, Lionel, in light of some discussions that, that have taken place in Dell, for instance, on the use of a tool like this. I'll be interested to hear your thoughts on that when we come to that point in sure. that conversation. Sure. Uh, but this is new for all of us. We tend to do FR interviews as audio. Here we are doing this one in this way, and we're just going to have a, have a chat where we'll have the opportunity of actually looking at each other for a change. So um, I mentioned Lionel is the chief blogger at Dell, and Dell today, without any question, in my view, is regarded as the poster child uh, of uh, corporates using social media generally, but how they started out, particularly uh, with a good old blog. In those days, that was social media, basically. Uh, it's evolved a lot, and uh, Dell started in this space uh, uh, way back in um, uh, 06, and uh, we interviewed Lionel on this show, FIR, as an FIR interview in January 2007. So the point primarily of today was to get together with Lionel to uh, to get a sense of, okay, what's happened in the last four years uh, from a Dell perspective, from particularly a blogging perspective. Uh, Lionel is still the chief blogger at Dell. He was an architect. I'm not going to praise him too much because we'll get into our conversation in a second. But maybe we start, Lionel, uh, maybe just a little look at exactly that early day. Uh, in fact, I've got a, a kind of before that question. What brought you to this job and that title, Chief Blogger at Dell? How did, how did that come about? Yeah, and what were you doing before that? Mm. Yeah, so I was actually in, uh, in corporate PR is, uh, is where I was just before I started this, uh, you know, this work in social media. Um, and, uh, you know, essentially I'd been in, in, uh, in PR for Dell for uh, about 10 years, uh, mm -hmm. you know, when I, when I accepted this role and, um, you know, in that it was a mix of, of product PR, did a lot of, you know, server and storage for about six years and then, uh, moved on to the other, other product groups doing product PR. And then, uh, you know, last step before, like I said, was in corporate and you look at how it all played out. It was just a really fortunate thing in that, uh, you know, we needed someone in this role that had connections in, uh, in, in, you know, in a lot of those product areas and uh, also within within tech support and you know when I started my career at Dell that's where I started was in the frontline tech support so you look at, at you know all the you know, the experience I had it's like I was preparing myself for this job and I didn't even know it and and uh, you know that that kind of uh, you know, background and those connections with uh, with the product teams at Dell and and obviously the comms experience that I built up along the way all those things have served me well in, in this role and, and, uh, and deciding what I blog about and how we do it. Okay. So if we look back to um, July of 2006 uh, and when Direct to Dell, the blog as we know it today, started, um, tell us a bit about that because I'm looking at, uh, as I'm speaking, I'm looking at uh, the, one of the posts you wrote on 11th of July 2006, real people are here and we're listening, uh, you stated in that post. I think that was your first public post on the blog. There were a few prior to that that were what I would call product-oriented posts. Uh, tell us a bit about this. I mean, everyone listening I know, certainly in the FAR community, has heard of that that old phrase, devil helm, all of that stuff. Uh, and this blog and the activity was a response to all of that. Can you maybe concisely set that background scene that lets us understand why Director Dell started and what what it was like uh, in that start period where you had a lot of feedback when you started posting? Yep, sure did. Uh, you know, so real quick, I mean, it really started from you know from a request from Michael Dell, and, and um, you know, he came to my manager at the time, who was Bob Pearson, and said, "Hey, there's all these people in the blogosphere. They're 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 talking about Dell." Dell products, you know, some of them have problems, and, and you know, why aren't we going out and 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 you know, matching them up with support people that can fix the problems? 
And that really is how it started. That was in April of 2006. Yeah, so we started purely from a, hey, let's find these customers from a break fix perspective and what I call blogify the support experience. You know, you know, do it out there in such a public sort of way. Um, and in the midst of that, we started to get a whole lot of feedback in terms of not just, hey, here are these one-offs, but we started seeing trends. What are the underlying trends that are you know, causing people to get to this point? And you know, as we were giving Michael regular updates on how this outreach was going, uh, it was pretty clear we had a uh, you know another natural step in a, in a broader digital media plan. And we looked at, at what was available at the time, and it was pretty clear: hey, a blog is 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 built for a two-way dialogue. Uh, there's all these fundamental issues that we're hearing about from a listening standpoint. We know we need to address. A blog is a natural uh, you know a natural next step for that. And you know, we you know, basically you know, presented that idea to Michael, and um, you know, I remember at the time the plan was to to launch it in in, uh, in about three months. You know, we had you know, roughly a quarter to you know to to get it off the ground in terms of the plan. Michael looked at it and said, "Hey, that's a great idea. Go do it. Don't take three months. Do it in three weeks." <laughs> and uh, when all was said and done, it took us about four weeks to get it up and running. Um, you know, so honestly, you know, that, that, uh, you know, four weeks of time was, it was a blur to me, you know, cause we had so much stuff to, you know, to work out in that short amount of time. Uh, and then, uh, you know, but, but leading up to it, you look at, at the timeline, I mean, I had four months of experience in terms of, you know, addressing some tough issues out there in the blogosphere, uh, and you know, had a good idea of how to do it. Uh, and also I had a good idea of the, of the level, the, the level of negativity and the, and the, and just the, you know, the, the, the level of passion that's out there uh, on, on both sides. Uh, but honestly, you asked me how, how it was in those early days. Uh, I remember in, in the first couple of days, we, we basically did, did a soft launch, decided not to announce it, just, you know, just put it out there. And, uh, and that's where, you know, both Shell and, and Scoble and, and Steve Rebell and, and Jeff Jarvis, they all found it and all reacted. And that was my post that you, that you just mentioned in reaction to, you know, to their seeing it. Um, and you know, I remember in the midst of those, you know, that reality. I mean, comments were pouring in. And back in those days, uh, we had um, we didn't have a way to authenticate users, so we we moderated all the comments. And in those early days, we couldn't even keep up with the number of comments. I'd moderate pages of comments, and we'd be more pages behind. And those first couple of days, I remember thinking, "Wow, I thought I knew what I was getting into, but uh, you know, this may be tougher than I thought." Uh, but luckily, after those first couple of days, it started to normalize, and you know, and we started to mobilize from there. Well, you've uh, come a long way since then. Uh, were you the? I mean, you weren't the only blogger when it launched, but you've got a lot of a lot more people involved in in preparing the the posts for the blog and and more than one blog. Can you talk about how this is? expanded just just from the perspective of blogging i mean i know you're yeah. engaged in other channels and other platforms but just from yeah. blogging perspective uh, how has it expanded since those early days yeah from uh you know, the way it really played out is is like you said we started with uh, with i think we had uh you know four other bloggers besides me in those early days to start um you know and uh, you know, we, we basically picked those people based on the, the kinds of discussions we knew we, we needed to have. Uh, and uh, and from there, it just kind of grew. I mean, yeah, and I'll honestly, when, when we launched, I think, uh, you know, those four people that we had as bloggers were, some of them were, were scared away, you know, just by the, you know, the, the rush of, of feedback and, uh, and sometimes the level of negativity. So had a little bit of a, a retreat in those early days, but then uh, very quickly, as we started to, you know, to, to blog about more topics and people started to see, hey, customers are really reacting to this in a positive way, you know, it, it became really easy to get more people on board. And you look at where we are today, I mean, I, I, you know, I haven't made a, a, a count of the actual number of people, but I think just on direct to Dell, we've got, a, we've got over 300 contributors. And that's really a mix of me going out and actively you know, finding these people, hey, here's the topic area. Let me find the, the subject matter expert within the business that, you know, that can, can talk to this. Uh, that's part of it. Now we've got other people that are coming to us uh, you know, proactively, uh, and that's happened you know, regularly over the last several years. The other new thing we have over the last year or so is we have a pretty robust training program. And you know, uh, basically, we you know, uh, any of our employees can take these social media 
uh, classes and, and get certified. And there's different uh, different ways they can be certified, or different types of platforms they can be certified on, and blogs are one of those things. And uh, you know, so just looking at that, we've got you know probably about uh, you know four or five hundred people that are certified uh, on the blog side uh, that you know that haven't even contributed to the blog yet. So you know, there's that natural influx of people that are coming in just based on interest, and and they're knocking on the door. Uh, and my point is, it, it's a lot more. Uh, you know, there's a lot more of that happening now, uh, five years into it, than there were in the early days, where it was a lot of me finding people and, and pulling them in. I mean, that's interesting you saying that, Lionel, because uh, that sort of number is, is, is uh, I think, a, a, a testament, I suppose, to many things within your, your company, which I know others uh, were probably interested to, to kind of think about this a bit, which is the, uh, the support you have in the organization to enable this. You mentioned Michael Dell was instrumental in, in all of this stuff happening. Mm -hmm. uh, but it also requires, I think, uh, and again, you see it, you mentioned the hundreds of people who are involved in this, the willingness to do this, the culture in the organization that enables this kind of thing to happen. Uh, I guess my question is, leading from that is, looking at where we are today, five years on, where all these other channels now are, are at our fingertips, Twitter, Facebook, all these other means that uh, to many is a more popular way of engaging, it's certainly quicker and all that. How does how do the blogs, I was going to say the blog, but the plural, how, how does Director Dell and the other web properties you have that are blogs uh, fit into that overall ecosystem, I suppose you call it now, of engagement. I mean, what is the difference, uh, perhaps, with, you know, when you started it was the blog and there was little else. Now it's yeah. one among a variety of tools that have multiple goals. How do you see it all as part of that jigsaw? Where do blogs fit now? Yeah, and I, I agree, you know, that, you know, that the, you know, the, the, the reality that all these other social networks are, are, are available to people and, and more people are using them, you know, that has had an impact on blogging, I would say, overall. But still, what hasn't changed is, is that, that blogs are still a good, uh, a good uh, you know, central place for conversation. You know, so we may have several related conversations on a LinkedIn group or, or uh, on Twitter uh, where, you know, you know, it's good for you know for you know two or three back and forth kind of things, but if you're if you're having that kind of conversation, it, it you know it, and it, it naturally is leading to a broader you know a broader bigger discussion. That's where blogs are, are, are really effective, I think. You know, we may have, and that's what I, I look for as well. If I'm if I'm having a, a conversation with a couple of customers on Twitter about a certain topic, that's kind of a cue to me that hey, maybe I need to look more into this and, and write a blog post about it, and. Uh, and then in terms of um, when, when I'm looking at, at writing a blog post, there's certain things that, that I look at. Let me, you know, let me almost look at this as a reference post where this is one of those posts that I know, you know based on conversations I'm having out on the web about something like Google+, Plus, let's say. If I have a good overview of here we are with Google+, you know, I can have those conversations about Google+, Plus in that network or in Twitter or other places and then you know when when it makes sense I can link people back to this blog post that you know that provides a, a broader context and I think that use that utility is something that we we continue to get to focus on today uh, and you see it in, in simple things like like break fix issues where we're talking about something that impacts hundreds or even thousands of customers that's a natural kind of way to do it uh, you know, our natural use for it. There's other things like, like I said, when you're you're talking about social networks or or you're just having a broader topic discussion about you know something on the enterprise side like virtualization or cloud computing. You know, uh, we can use reference posts like that that you know customers that may not understand the full breadth of what we're offering from a cloud computing perspective. We can have those those snippets of conversations and then link people back to posts that say, hey. Here's what Dell's cloud team is all about. Here's our approach to the cloud. Here's what we're doing moving forward. And that, you know, the blogs help really fill in the gaps and provide that broader context. And I think, you know, there's, there's no other tools that, that do that as effectively as blogs do. But the blogs are part of an ecosystem, right? I mean, you end up uh, posting something in the blogosphere. People end up talking about it on Twitter. They end up talking about it on LinkedIn and, and Facebook. Do you have to pull all these loose ends together somehow in order to assess the effectiveness of the overall communication? Yeah, you know, I, I do. And, and that is a, you know, that 
that fragmentation is still a, a difficult thing, I would say. Um, and our, our strategy has always been to, to go where the conversations are. Um, and, you know, like you mentioned in the early days, it was easy when, when we just had a blog. Well, you look, you look back in that time frame when we, we did that first interview in 2007, that was just about a month before we, we, uh, we unveiled IdeaStorm. You know, and uh, and then that led to other things, and in, in our presence in Facebook, and and uh, in 2007, we 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 started to experiment in Twitter, and then we we started to you know, to really uh, get a lot of traction in Twitter, and uh, yeah, you know, the blog was kind of a, a natural. Everything we learned in terms of interacting with customers on the blog, I would say, it served us well for new things like IdeaStorm and things like Twitter. When uh, when they were new, a lot of those same fundamental concepts we learned in in uh, in having discussions with with customers on the blog applied to all the other social networks. Just explain a bit briefly, if you can, Lionel, what IdeaStorm is for listeners who may not have heard of it. Yeah, IdeaStorm is is you know at its core, it's a pretty simple process. It really is a a a place where any user can go to and. Uh, and submit an idea about, hey, this is how I think Dell could become a better company or how Dell could build better products. You know, and so literally any user can, you can, you know, in a few seconds create an account and, and submit an idea. Uh, what's different about it though is it's all community driven. The community can see an idea and they vote it up or down. And, you know, based on, uh, you know, how quickly an idea is getting votes, or just the wrong number of, of votes for that will dictate what ideas show up on the on the front page. It's it's like a dig model in that in that sense. And uh, like I said, it's all community driven, so that anybody that you know that that submits an idea that's getting a lot of votes or a lot of positive votes uh, will see my ideas on the on the front page. And that's those are the ideas that we look at uh, across the board, not just the the front page ideas, but we look at them. In a number of different categories, and bring those back to our product teams to say, "Hey, is this feasible? Or if it's not, why why isn't it feasible?" And it's a way for us to to take that feedback and and uh, potentially make better products because of it. But uh, Idea Storm, I know, has an internal version called the Employee Storm. Uh, mm -hmm. What about blogs and other social media? Is, is is this all been employed internally, and is there you know, sort of this this merging of internal and external at, at Dell? So that I mean, I know you you put employees through uh, the training. I, I know that you've got the social media and communities, the Smack uh, yeah. community, uh, and and the uh, conference that uh, is held for that. But um, I, I'm thinking of a McKinsey study that I saw that said that three you know, percent of organizations or what they call fully networked, internal, external, uh, and internal to external, and they're producing the best performance, the, the best results. Uh, how is all that integrating at, at, at Dell? Yeah, and, uh, and we, we, I, hope this, you know, I hope that we, we fit into that category. And, uh, and, uh, and, and, uh, and you know, with, the, with those McKinsey results you just talked about, you know, the way it played out for us, we launched externally first. You know, and you know, I think our situation was a little unique in that, you know, there was a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of interest in us doing this externally, uh, but but the way it played out for us, we had uh, about a month after we launched Direct to Dell, we had uh, an internal version of the blog, which is called One Dell Way, and you know, so literally uh, a lot of what happened externally first. Same thing with IdeaStorm. You know, it was a it was a little bit longer than a month. It, it was a couple of months. There was you know, there were internal things that needed to be worked out from an IT perspective. Uh, you know, to get employee storm to work, but but essentially our model was you know let's you know, we launched everything externally and then very soon after we launched internal versions and uh, you know there's other internal tools we use now like uh, you know like Chatter you know Chatter is obviously an internal uh, collaboration tool and and we adopted that I'd say you know, probably about a year ago maybe even longer and uh, now we have you know all of our employees worldwide have access to to Chatter you know so. That's something we use uh, you know, to uh, you know, to you know, create ad hoc groups. We can share documents. We can you know, we can follow documents. We can follow discussion threads. All those kinds of things that you know that uh, you, that you're used to doing externally. We can do a lot of that collaboration now internally. Uh, and uh, you know, we've got on the on the blog side now. You know, it's grown from one dial away to you know probably six or seven internal blogs. And on the external side, we have I think we're up to about nine nine blogs now. So it's mirrored what we've done externally, but pretty close 
You mentioned international. That's in my mind. You know, I'm over here in the UK, as you know. And looking at the thought in my mind, I wonder what you can tell us, Lionel, about. Um, you know, you you mentioned the number of blogs you've got external, the number you've got internally. How how did how did how what was that like in in introducing your colleagues in other parts of, of the Dell organization around the world, where you know English isn't their first language, uh, there are different cultural issues in countries, let alone the the, the, the company in those countries. How how did that scale around the world, and and you know what can you tell us about that in terms of employees elsewhere? How are they engaged via these tools and channels that you now have internally and externally, for that matter? But I yeah. guess more internally. How, how yeah. did it get going? Yeah, well, it was it was really a mix. I mean, there were some you know, like in the case of the Japanese blog, that was a you know an external push, and we had looked at you know the the technology state of the blogosphere, you know. Uh, Reports that would you know that were pretty common every year uh, in those early days, uh, and it was you know it was you know pretty clear that that Japanese and English were the the top two languages. Kind of either you know depending on the on the year, it might flip flop one way or the other. But Japanese was obviously a very prevalent language in terms of the blogosphere, so that was one where we we proactively you know contacted the team and, and got it off the ground. Uh, you know, but then uh, other ones like the you know the um, the Spanish blog, we had resources that came to us and said, "Hey, we want to, we want to, we want to do this on our own." Mm -hmm. And you know, same thing uh, on the Chinese side. We were lucky to have Jackie Zhu, who was part of our team. Uh, you know, she was from China and uh, a native Chinese speaker. Uh, she helped me on direct to Dell. Uh, you know, for you know, for a few months. You know, got a good feel for you know for the day to day operations of it. And then, you know, once, uh, once we got her to, you know, to that point, you know, she, you know, she launched the Chinese blog and ran it really well for, you know, for a good couple of years. So it was a mix. And now you look at it, we've got, um, we've got Chinese, we've got Japanese, we've got Spanish and, uh, and, um, uh, and, and we've got a blog in India, which is, which is still in English. Uh, but, you know, the way we run the, 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 the regional blogs is just like we do the, the regular, uh, external blogs. We have a, a blog owner. Uh, or sometimes two blog owners uh, in those regions, and um, you know we have various ways of sharing content. I've got a content calendar that I you know that I use, uh, and then of course we use email and and, and regular you know regular face to face meetings to, to just be up to speed. You know keep everybody in, uh, on the same page as far as what's being worked on. Uh, you know uh, things that they're hearing from from their side. Uh, I'm always telling the regions, hey, I really would like to see. If you've got a post that you know, that talks about uh, you know some unique things we're doing in China that provide a U.S. audience a, a unique perspective on why it's different to do business in China and how it's different to do business in China, we want to feature that here on on, on Direct to Dell in English. So when we do those things, what we'll do is is uh, you know basically I'll do an intro uh, you know to explain why we're why we're sharing the information, and we'll do a uh, an English, you know, translation of it, and then the the Chinese version right underneath. You know, and uh, I definitely want to do more of those things. And, and when, when we've done those things in the past, we got a lot of interest, you know, from readers. And uh, you know, it, it was something that you know I was thinking about just from a you know from a, a reader perspective. You know, there were other folks in the industry that looked at it and said, "This is pretty unique that that Dell is doing something like mm -hmm. this." Uh, you know, and uh, you know, I. That's really, you know, my, my strategy is to look at it from a, hey, would, would our readers, you know, gain an insight? Would, would they learn something new? And, 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 you know, can we share information that way? That's really, you know, the, the, the focus for me and how I try to interact with the, with the regional teams. It's it's interesting that we're chatting today uh, in just about, uh, let's see, about uh, half an hour. Uh, Altimeter is releasing a report. Of course, this will air after that, so we're not violating any embargoes here. Uh, on the organizational readiness or preparedness for, for social media. Uh, and, and one of the things they say is, is, is that a characteristic of organizations that are prepared for social media, the ones that experience fewer crises and the likes, uh, and the like, are, are, are the ones that have processes in place for dealing with issues that arise. Uh, and, and I'm wondering, uh, at Dell, um, 
with with you and your role as the chief blogger, but also with the folks who are out there on Twitter and and, and the other channels, if something like a, a Dell Hell were to erupt today, uh, I, I assume you're not going to run around uh, disorganized, wondering what to do. That there's some sort of process in place for figuring out quickly, you know, in recognition that this is. Uh, a real-time environment, uh, how you're going to deal with that. What, 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 what kind of process is there, and what did it take to get that um, in, in place? Yeah, well, in the early days, we had, we had uh, known that that was going to be something we had to be prepared for. You know, so, you know, so we had, uh, had, had some things in place. Um, you know, and, and the battery recall was a good example. You know, I mean, we, you know, I blogged about that, uh, I think, three or four days into, into having Director Dell as a blog. Uh, and then didn't know it at the time, but you know, but started working with our teams uh, internally. Uh, you know, they they had already contacted the customer, uh, and and they had you know out of that work they started to capture other systems. And of course, I didn't know it at the time when I blogged about it. I said, "Hey, we're working with the customer. You know, we're we're looking into the we're looking into the into the details. When we have more to share, I'll, I'll do it here." Uh, you know, fast forward about a month later. You know, after our team started doing the you know, the investigative work and, and you know capturing systems from you know, from all over the world, uh, that's when we we ultimately came out you know several weeks later with the battery recall. You know, and um, you know it, 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 the the process works the same way. I tell you, what's different now is we've got a lot more sophisticated tools. So now we have a command center you know that is is looking for for those kinds of things. And of course, you know, uh, we as as uh, as social media types have all have access to Radian Six as a tool, you know, so we're looking at at Radian Six and, and monitoring things that way. The command center is doing the same thing, uh, you know, So the way it works now is we can share information, you know, either uh, if we see something on our end, someone like me or, or Susan BB or, or Richard Adele, uh, we can submit it to you know, to the command center, have them do a deeper dive and see, hey, is this something that is uh, is you know a, a, a a, a, a isolated situation, or is this is this something that's a bigger issue? You know, so it, it, that that process works both ways, uh, and you know the difference now is we can get a good sense for how big of a scope, uh, you know, how many customers. All those things happen in near real time now. Where back in the early days, it was a much more manual process. But but what hasn't changed in that process is it, it starts with people like me. Uh, and you know, and, and having relationships with with the product teams. So whether we're talking a consumer issue or whether we're talking a business client issue or a server issue, you know, I can go to the teams that that we need to go to, you know, to start hashing through the information, figuring out you know what the problems are, and then of course my job is 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 helping to figure out you know what do we share externally and how do we start rolling out, out that information. Um, the other thing that I think has changed now, we still use the blog as a fundamental method of communication throughout that process. Uh, you know, with the advent of things like Twitter, um, you know, that has become our, our mechanism for you know for the early response. You know, I kind of look at the you know our our um, our you know it, our product issue cycle is is kind of three phases. That first phase is just acknowledging, hey, we hear the discussion out there, we're looking into it. And in the early days, I used to you know, to blog about that, you know, like I did on the you know on the exploding laptop in Osaka. Um, now we we'll use we we'll use our at Dell account on Twitter, you know, to just give that initial hey, we 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 hear the feedback and we're looking into it. And then you know from there it depends on you know we look at okay where is the discussion if it's happening on our forum and it's isolated there we'll respond there, or if it's happening on our forum and no book review we'll respond in those two places. And then in, in the on the back end, we're looking for, hey, is that expanding beyond our forum and uh, and notebook review? And if it is, that's when we start to look at, you know, do we do a blog post about it? So it's a it's a you know, sure we have documentation in place, but there's always a fluid. Let's have a discussion with with the right people to decide where we're going to communicate and how we're going to communicate. It's interesting you mentioned Susan Beebe, uh, Lionel, because it, it brings to my mind that we, we've interviewed quite a few Dell people over the last four to five years. Um, uh, we've interviewed Susan uh, as Chief Listening Officer. We, I recall we interviewed Lynn Tyson about the Investor Relations blog. We've talked to Richard uh, Binhammer, Kerry Bridge over here in the UK as well. Uh, we've uh, seen things happening, live tweeting, all that kind of stuff been going on. Uh, and so, you know, that clearly shows, and indeed you, you've outlined 
outline this, but uh, if you kind of need a confirmation, here you are as an organization that is made up of people who are experimenting, who are pushing envelopes, trying new things. You, you have the environment that encourages that, it fosters that kind of behavior. Uh, so I guess my, my, my kind of concluding question to you, I mean, it's, it's terrific hearing the, the, you know, this is where we've come from and now this is what's happened and here we are today and this is our picture. So obviously my question for you, uh, Lionel, is what's next? Where is, you know, what happens to Director Dell next? Uh, what are you looking at in terms of uh, the next, you know, five years is far too far in the future. What about the next 18 months to two years? Where does blogging fit uh, in your plans to achieve many of the things you've outlined already? You know, what's, what's next? for Director Dell in particular, and indeed for you, Lionel. Yeah, well, I think uh, yeah, we'll continue to use the blog the same way we have in the past. I mean, if you look at, at the core things that we blog about on Director Dell, it's, it's product launches, it's you know, the systemic issues, and thought leadership kind of topics. And uh, yeah, I don't think that'll change. And I, I think, you know, as we talked about before, the utility of blogs, I think, is still going to continue to, you know, to work the same way. Uh, what will be different is, you know, we'll see new tools like Google Plus and, uh, you know, other social networks will, 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 uh, will I'm sure take off in, in, in some capacity. And really, you know, for us, it's about how do we make these things work as a, as a co cohesive, uh, you know, and, and complementary, uh, sort of effort. You know, where we have, uh, you know, people that are, that are you know, responsible for our presence in these social networks. How do we stay on the same page? How do we you know, show a consistent front in that um, you know all this information is being developed in real time, and, and the collaboration aspect makes it pretty tough. Uh, you know, so I hope that in the future, you know, we are you know, we are able to you know, to assess that information. You know, that collective information coming from blogs, coming from you know, social networks and, and conversations all over the web, you know, how can we stitch those conversations together more effectively? I mean, it's, it's something we, we just talked about, uh, you know, with the fragmentation. You know, that's still a, dif a difficult process right now. I think you know, several years out, hopefully, we'll, we'll get better at that. And, and being able to present those cohesive uh, conversations with the customers. So if I'm coming in on a blog post, you know, I'm only going to see the blog post comments. You know, I'm not necessarily going to see, you know, going to see what's happening in Twitter or Google Plus that's related to this topic. And I know, you know, other bloggers have things like Discus and, and other aggregation, you know, things are, are starting to come about. I hope to see more sophistication on that front so that we can, we can provide, you know, uh, the, the cohesive conversation for our customer, you know, if they're coming in one, one door or the other. And I hope you know, that that uh, you know that is something we can we can make more progress on. And in terms of what's next for me, I mean, people ask me this question all the time because I've been in this role for five years. Yeah. Uh, and and um, you know my answer is that I'm still having a blast. I mean, this has been the most fun I've had since I've been here at Dell. I've been at Dell for almost 17 years now. And uh, you know this role is is challenging. Uh, I get to work with you know, with with uh, with employees from all over the business. I get to connect with customers all over the world, uh, and and to just be in the middle of it, you know. And um, you know, sure, I think you know the, the natural thing for you know, for us is to is to start to scale this you know more effectively. I'm still involved involved in a lot of the day to day operations, and yes, we're getting more people in, in, involved and in, and in, and in, you know and and contributing. But I want to move that you know forward so that if if I'm moving out of this role, you know somebody else can you know, can step in and and uh, and do the same things and more. And we've still got work to do there. So I think as long as as that's the case for me, uh, I'm going to keep doing this role and and being committed to it because I think uh, you know getting it to scale the right way is something that will serve the company well. Well, let me ask you one last question from my end uh, and. You know, every now and then we get this meme that erupts around uh, the social media uh, space uh, that, that blogging is dead. Uh, you know, I think Google Plus is, is the most recent catalyst for this. You have people like Kevin Rose who have just given up their blogs and gone completely uh, to Google Plus. Uh, I, I know that Dell is uh, very big on experimentation. Michael Dell has already talked about the prospect of using these hangouts as a, as a, as a customer service uh, channel. Uh, customer support channel, but how do you assess the effectiveness of the blogs and and you know maintain uh, the 
the, the viability of, of blogging as, as a platform as, as people are, you know, every, every now and then sort of dissing it. Yeah, well, you know, and uh, one thing I'll say, I mean, I, I, uh, you know, I titled a, a panel that, you know, that, uh, that we have scheduled for South by Southwest that I hope makes the cut. Uh, I titled it Blogging is Dead. Uh, and I called it the 2012 edition. Uh, and, and let's just say my, my point in calling it out that way is I don't believe blogging is dead. You know, and I know the conversation's already happened before. That's why I called it the 2012 edition. What I, what I was surprised by was the reaction of that. You know, once, uh, you know, Scoble is one of the, you know, Robert Scoble is one of the, the panelists. He had shared it on Google Plus. And I was surprised to see so many people focused on the blogging is dead part and reacting so vehemently to it. I'm like, hey guys, yeah, you know, I was talking about you know this this being you know the 2012 edition of the discussion, <laughs> you know, but yeah, you know, my point there is you know there's obviously a lot of people really passionate about blogs, and I think it it goes back to the utility that they serve, uh, and and I don't think that's going to change no matter what happens in social media, and uh, in terms of you know how do you you measure the effectiveness? Well, you know it's. How, do, how much conversation happens because of a blog post? How many inbound links does it, does it drive? What other conversations does it spur? You know, those are things that blogs can do more effectively than, than, you know, than, than other mediums. And I think you know, uh, you know, because they're, they're that, you know, that centralizing factor that happens in a blog, uh, you know, as a piece of content, it stands out more than than a Facebook update or a a, a, a series of tweets or uh, you know uh, or a, a single conversation in Google Plus. You know, so I think you know they will they will continue to exist and they will continue to serve a legitimate purpose. Uh, you know, so uh, I think you know what you know, what we need to think about as bloggers is how do we you know, how do we rise above the noise. You know, with all you know, you know, so many customers, you know, actively engaged in all these other social networks. There's any number of places they can, you know, they can, uh, you know, they can divide their their attention amongst. You know, and, and you know, from a blog perspective, it goes back to writing good content, you know, providing good context, you know, weaving it into part of a broader conversation instead of just writing in a vacuum. And all those things were were true in 2006 when we started. They're definitely you know, true now, and. Uh, and I think the more we as borders integrate ourselves into those conversations and, and introduce people to those conversations in a smart way, I mean, blogs are, are, are uh, I think, going to be very viable and, and you know, will, will serve a very, a very good purpose. Great. Well, well yep. I look forward to reading more of Director Dell and more of what's going on at Dell in that case. So, ciao. Yeah, All from, right, from uh, three separate time zones here. Uh, <laughs> Lionel, thanks so much for uh, taking the time to talk with us today. Yeah. Hey, I always appreciate it. Thanks for having me, guys. Thank, Thank you, Lionel. See you. Good to see you, by the way. Same here. <laughs>